I'm Deanna Bartolini, and I'm a certified spiritual director. And I'm Erin McCole Cup, and I'm a certified trauma recovery coach. I'm Marge Steinhag Fenland, and I'm a life coach. And, and we, and have, we mommy have mommy issues. Mommy issues. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mommy Issues, the podcast where we embrace all questions from moms, for moms, and about moms. We, that would be me, Deanna Bartolini, Erin McCole Cup, and Marge Steinhagen Fenelin, we are going to share our responses from the three angles of life coaching, trauma recovery coaching, and spiritual direction, all from a faithfully Catholic perspective. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about my grandparents, especially as our grand, our grandchildren are getting to the point where they they really appreciate gifts and they're starting to ask for what they want. My grandparents, I didn't know my mom's mom and dad, but I knew my dad's parents very well. And it was funny that when I got to the point of being a grandmother, and thinking about oh giving gifts to grandchildren that wasn't that wasn't my case at all not because my grandparents were cruel they were wonderful but they it wasn't something they did they had they had come they had immigrated to america after the devastation from germany by the way after the devastation of the first world war so at that point there was really very little left of germany they come here so it was in 1927, 26. Well, they walked right into the Great Depression just a few years after that. So they had they had spent years having to make use of every single little item that they came across and save every single cent. They they did not spend money unless it was medically necessary or or truly you know life and death in terms of of survival and and I was used to that as a as a kid it was fine we didn't I didn't care I didn't care whether we got gifts from grandma and grandpa I just loved being over at their house but now now we're looking at oh okay so I'm not my grandparents so that means I have to figure out how to give gifts to my grandchildren and one of the things that it my husband and I take very seriously is the requests of the parents and the preferences of the parents. So if it were up to me, I would get, I and, and I did do this one year until I was kindly asked not to ever do that again. But I personally, I like the noisy toys. I like the siren. I like the fire tricks with the, <laughs> with the flashing lights and the, and the sirens and the, yeah, well, it that didn't go over well. So we drastically offered, uh, altered our, our gift giving. And I, I wonder what you ladies, what are your experiences growing up with your grandparents or, or with your grandchildren in terms of gift giving? Because that's a big question. Well, I mean, like, I, I don't have grandkids yet. Um, if I did, I'd probably know about it. And like, I also both of my both sets of my grandparents, um, you know, came, were, you know, quote unquote, greatest generation, mm -hmm. money wasn't a thing. Um, the only gift I can actually ever remember getting from my grandparents on one side was just money. Um, yeah. that That's kind of it. <laughs> like, that's all they gave us. And like, I kind of get it because on one side of the family, I think I was one of 15 grandkids. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, I was one of 19. So, you know, like that's, that's a lot of, a lot of grandkids to to keep track of, and, you know, not set up a competition with. Um, not that either of those families were particularly healthy, um, but, you know, just on the no noisy toy. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Marge, that story just reminded me one year, the Christmas that my girls turned four, um, friends of ours got them Hannah Montana guitars. Uh -huh. So, they, but they weren't like with strings, they had buttons and it was like Hannah Montana songs and Hannah Montana sayings. And, you know, the girl's like, yeah. So they ran off with their guitars and I turned to my friends and say, I thought you liked us. 
<laughs> well, was there a chance for retribution when they had children? Oh, no, that, that was not to be. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm 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 going to be slightly embarrassed now but I'm going to tell the story anyway. I think I was a spoiled little brat in terms of my grandparents. I'm going to tell you why. I was the first born granddaughter on my mom's for my mom's parents, my grandparents, Nona and Nonu. All my grandparents were Nona and Nonu. And you just knew who you were talking about. When I was born, I had seven I had four grandparents and three great grandparents. I was truly, truly blessed. My grandparent, my great grandmother, my great grandfather, and my grandfather, they helped form me into the person I am today. I'm not exaggerating at all. But here's where the spoiled little brat comes in. I was born on my grandparents' wedding anniversary. Oh boy. <laughs> so, and I'm a December baby, which kind of, I'm sorry. It kind of stinks. Okay. I love Jesus with all my heart. I would do anything for Jesus. But even as a kid, there was always like that, man, man, there's a lot going on. Right. But because I was born on their anniversary, I, once I hit, I forget how old I was. Maybe I was 10. I, they would take me to dinner and a show on Broadway. Yeah. So I got to see, and dinner was not like McDonald's or a diner. Dinner were four and five star restaurants because my grandfather was in the restaurant business. He was a bartender. He'd been an owner at one point of a club. So we didn't go just anywhere. We went to really nice places. My most memorable was going to Sardi's, which is still a place. And the waiters sung happy birthday to me oh, on my birthday. Oh. I think I was 15. I also got to see now this shows this is showing my age in a really big way. So those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, just go look it up. Okay. <laughs> Yul Brenner uh, and the King and I. Oh, get out. Wow. Yes, ma'am. I was et a spoiled cetera, little brat. Et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that like that's what that's what we did. That's what I did for my birthday. And it was always around my birthday. And sometimes it would be cold. Once in a rare occurrence, we would have snow because, you know, I lived in New York City then. Um, but it was just the coolest thing. I got to be such a grown up alone with my grandparents at really nice restaurants and seeing these amazing shows, amazing shows. So I was a little bit of a spoiled brat. Yeah. But as far as what we do for our grandchildren, I will buy them books for their first Christmas, they get a stuffed saint doll uh, based on their name or something, you know, Aww. so it depends what their name. So Joseph, Henry Joseph got Joseph. The only one who didn't get her name, her name was Nora. So she got a Mary uh, stuffed toy. Cecilia, Ava Cecilia got St. Cecilia, so forth. Fine. Christopher got Christopher. No, he got John, John the Baptist. That's it. But after that, I really don't buy them a lot of things. We give them experiences. So we have two sets of grandchildren. So we take them places. Our last adventure was Gatorland. <gasps> I have lived in Florida for 39 years, and we had never been to Gatorland. And it's been there forever. And it was, there were a lot of alligators. Lots and lots of alligators. The kids loved it. The kids absolutely loved it. And my one grandson said to his dad, I really love being with grandpa and Nona at Gatorland. And I said to him, he liked it because he was with his cousins. And so to build those experiences and those bonds, that's really, it's like, it's like the, the best thing. It really is such a good thing that we can give them. And I, I really love doing that. So, so, so <laughs> why are we talking about gifts, ladies? Well, okay. So we're talking about gifts because the question that we've gotten from an anonymous friend of the show is the following my mother-in-law bought our son a lot of toys we specifically asked her not to buy our son is coming up on his first birthday because we're trying to raise our son to live simply my husband and i made a decision to only have toys made of wood or fabric we communicated this clearly to our families for Christmas, 
but my mother-in-law bought our son what must have been hundreds of dollars worth of noisy plastic toys. I told her that even if we did want him to have plastic toys, we don't even have room for everything she gave him. She then told me she didn't care and was going to keep buying him toys that we don't approve of because we are so, and this is in quotes, boring, and she wants to be the fun Grammy. My husband is afraid to talk to her about this. I just know she's going to pull the same thing at our son's birthday. Ooh. What do we, what if this young mom showed up for spiritual direction, for life coaching, or trauma recovery coaching? What would we say? I mean, at, at first blush, it seems like like this is not my you know realm. This is not traumatic, is it? But things like this, they don't come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like this level of disregard doesn't Disrespect. just suddenly pop up. Yeah. Disrespect yeah. is what Disrespect. I thought. Disrespect. Yeah. Disregard. Disrespect. Just dissing her. She's being totally dissed. <laughs> So many thoughts came into my head all at once because I'm playing both the the child and the mom and the all three the and the and the grandmother at once and seeing all of the different perspectives. But the, you, I think that I wish I could talk to the grandmother, quite frankly. Yes, and maybe she'll <laughs> listen. Hey, Grammy, are you listening? I hope so. Here's the thing, and and I I I have to remind myself of this from time to time, even about my own kids and grandkids, those grandchildren are not her children. She's to raise her children. And while you always care, you're always willing to help, you always pray for them, and you always have responsibility for their salvation in the capacity that God allows you, those grandchildren are not your children. You raise your children and you let them go and you let them make their own decisions. So that would be my a mild version of what, what I might talk to that grandmother about. But if, if I were working with, I would want to work with both the husband and the wife together in this situation, even though it's the, the mom that posed the question. And in my first question would be why the, the reticence on the part of the the, the son or the dad in approaching his mom. My sense would be there's something there that needs addressing that may not only have to do with toys. So that that is where I would go with that. And you, without actually being able to to sit down with the two of them i don't i can't predict what they would say but but this this idea that he's afraid to talk to his own mom is indicative of of something more going on there and perhaps the the, the mom of this this little boy needs to sit down with the dad and not not even talk about the grandmother in the sense of you know what are you going to do but ask why why are you afraid to approach her that's where that's where i would start yeah you know and especially this child is not even a year old yeah so the the disrespect and the disregard is only going to get worse it gets bigger i mean now it's noisy plastic toys who knows what it gets becomes when the child is older. Yeah. I think from my perspective, and I've heard this so many times, people saying it to me, saying it about themselves, and we have to honor our parents. And this is true. We do have to honor our parents. But there's also a verse that says that fathers should not, um, it's not, the word is not annoy, but it's provoke. basically provoke. provoke. Oh, thank you. You know, don't provoke your children. Right? Don't provoke your children. And I think mm -hmm. that if you have raised, as Mart said, you raised your children, right? You have a son who is married to this woman. Mm -hmm. Now they've given you a grandson. 
that is a true gift. Why, why are you mucking it up? Why are you being difficult? That's what I would say to the grandmother, which probably isn't the most kind thing. Sorry. Yeah, um, that's that's going to put her like automatically on. Like, right. I have so, a but, feeling this person, whatever you say to her, mm -hmm. she's going to get defensive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So so really, it's the husband and, and wife, the mom and dad have to come together and they have to be of one mind. And so let the grandmother give the kid the toys don't open them and bring them back to the store and put the money in a savings account for college. I mean, I mean, there's a practical aspect that she said they don't have room for them. There's the whole, this stuff is going to get broken and fill up a landfill. They don't like that idea. Where is the respect for the way they want to live? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you're absolutely right, Erin. If they have said, this is not what we're doing. And then the, the grandmother went ahead and did anyway. There is no talking to her. Yeah. But that's just the the grandmother's behaving badly part that I don't appreciate. Right. Mothers in laws, mothers in law, is that mothers, mothers in law, in -law yes. <laughs> and grandmothers who who do bad things or do do things that are not helpful or appreciated by their in laws. It upsets upsets me because you know what? Why can't you be happy for your child? That's sort of my thing. But as far as the the husband, the son of the, of the mother, you said in in another episode we talked about how the husband and wife come together and they're to be one. They are to cleave to each other. Mm -hmm. Leave the parents behind in a sense, right? And so have be unified with your wife and talk to the mom, talk to your mother. Yeah. That is going to go a long way toward cementing your relationship with your wife and also putting down that boundary. And if we haven't talked a lot about what to do when you try to set the boundary or set the boundary and your mother disregards it, like what I want to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> but at some point, you know, this is your family and your mother raised her your mother-in-law raised her family. Now it's your turn and your values are important. Yeah. The, uh, uh, Deanna, what she said about, um, wait, I think both of you said it about, you know, we're supposed to honor our father and mother. And that so often gets twisted into, and in order to honor them, you have to do exactly as they say. Mm -hmm. When what honor is, is treating somebody with dignity. And walking on eggshells around somebody because you don't think they can handle reality is an insult. Now, they may prefer to live in that insult, yeah. but that doesn't mean we have to insult them that way. We do not have to act like they are too fragile to take reality. We do not have to act like we are too, they are too fragile to hear the word no. To not have things their way. And, you know, just the way it's worded in here, my husband is afraid to talk to her about this. Like you guys were saying, what's he afraid of? Mm -hmm. um, like, obviously, I, there there are too, too many details missing from this, but I have seen this dynamic over and over and over again. So I'm just going to generalize here. Um, I see a lot of red flags for this marriage yeah. in this question. Unfortunately, I hope I'm wrong about these, this particular couple, but a lot of times there are men who, um, and I'm sure this happens with women too. I'm just don't let, let's take a minute to not center the men here, um, uh, in the, in the, you know, fragile spot, not that women are fragile. What am I saying here? I I've seen it frequently with men that they marry somebody that they think will just take whatever and you know love him no matter what because that's kind of what we sort of sort of what we vow to do in marriage and then they become more worried about angering their mothers than about disconnecting from their wives and when we treat a man 
like he is too fragile to stand up for his wife against his mother, to stand up for his family against his mother, then we are not honoring him. We are not respecting him. Mm. And people will, they're just going to act the way they're going to act. Yeah. Like I, I heard a saying in recovery, present what you would prefer, like this mom did. I prefer that you not give our son five bajillion dollars worth of crappy plastic toys and that's all we can do we can we can only voice our preferences we cannot make anybody do anything so it's like do what you want you will anyway right but and, that doesn't mean go ahead sorry right now they they that but like i you were probably about to say, were you about to say that that doesn't mean that we we can just let them do what they want no, you know, so the mom is going to, the grandmother is going to continue to do what she wants, but then what is your response? Because you can't control, we, we all right. agree, we cannot control the grandmother. Right. What, okay, so I would suggest as an option to this mom, I get, I, we've talked in another episode about book ending, because this sounds like it's going to be a difficult conversation, difficult conversation with the mother-in-law, difficult mm -hmm. conversation with the husband, probably talk to the husband first and book end it with talking to a supportive mature adult sounds like in this case that's not the husband so you know broaden your support system talk to another supportive adult for and after tell the husband you know, or have a conversation with the husband you know ask what are you afraid of how can i support you with this fear how can i show you that i'm on your side how can we look at this together rather than from opposite sides how can we be on the same team? And if he shuts down, then we have options. We can act like he needs to be coddled, which is insulting, whether he likes it or not. Or we can choose to behave like I am an adult and I'm going to treat you like an adult. The adult thing to do here is to say, this is what we prefer. And if you choose to go against this preference, we're going to return the gifts and put the money in a college account. Or we're going to give the gifts to charity. Or whatever, you know, you one feels more at ease morally doing. And then follow through. Because That's the I think key. it's yeah, um, I think Brene Brown says kids push our limits to limits to see how far we can go before we reveal that we're full of crap you know kids push our limits and this sounds like a very immature mother-in-law yeah so in a sense she's still a kid yeah so we've got to stick to our guns and again it goes without saying do this with prayer do this with the holy spirit yeah. you know beg the intercession of our blessed mother um ask guardian angels to get together and you know soften hearts there are all sorts of wonderful tools spiritual tools available to us too that Diana, that's obviously your you know your forte here so please add whatever but yeah that's okay I, but those are my suggestions when i first read the question uh, before we brought it up for this episode my the first word that came to me was control that this this grandmother is exerting control not only it's not just about being the fun granny this is about controlling that entire family and through material goods and and this i have seen before and it is it is agonizing to watch it, it's it's just agonizing to watch because it, you know it's I'm I admire this young this young mom because she does not feel beholden to the grandmother but I so often see where extravagant gifts are given or lots of money is spent and then and then the husband and wife feel beholden to whichever grandparent mm. is doing all the buying and and you know giving and the fancy trips and whatever it, they feel beholden so there's they're rendering themselves powerless to parent effectively 
because there's always going to be that subconscious or or actually that that consultation so to speak with the with the grandparent that's doing this i mean that's I, for me that's where i can see it going just based on other people i've worked with and it's it's if you want to preserve your family unit no matter who it is whether it's a grandparent or a teacher or whoever it is if you've got somebody doing this kind of controlling of your kids or you and your spouse it, this is more than just a preference gee i wish they wouldn't do that this is this could this is a a, a, a danger to the sacredness of your family yeah cuz even look at the wording that this mother-in-law uses you know, calling her son and daughter-in-law boring Mm -hmm. and wanting to be the fun Grammy. That is deliberately setting up a conflict Mm -hmm. where she is, she is, wants to be the good one. And she wants to put the parents in a bad box. Like, yeah, that's so destructive. Again, huge, huge, huge red flags, huge red flags. Mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's dangerous. And like, you know, we were saying at the beginning, it's, this is not going to get better without, you know, standing up now and saying, no, this, this stops here. And you can either, you know, play nicely or mm-hmm. we will go and play somewhere else. Like that's. Mm-hmm. You can take your toys and go home. Yes. <laughs> take your toys and go home. Take your toys. Just take the toys. Yeah. 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 And, and you don't like ultimatums are, are icky. Um, so they have to be framed properly. And I think the whole prayer part of it, and the father, you know, I, my family, uh, not my family of origin, the family I have with my husband, um, we're not super traditional in many ways um, with the sense of that, you know, the father always being the head. We really did a lot of most things really together. We were in it together. And and as parents, we were very much, this is what we think is best and but the father like standing standing up to your parents should not be difficult but it can be and i think we have to guard against thinking like that it's a that it's sinful i mean there's a way to yes. do it obviously mm-hmm. you know we polite respectful with love with concern however you know jesus never said come follow me and let me be, I'm going to, you're going to be my doormat Mm -hmm. there. That that doesn't happen. Right. Right. And And he only got crucified the one time. (laughs) Yes. And so there's this sense of really, it has to be a mutual respectful relationship. It can't just be about you doing what I think is right because otherwise you're boring. Right. I kind of want to go back to the word you said about ultimatum because sometimes it can like, the word boundary gets misconstrued in a lot of ways. Yes. Like it can be a lot of people think I set a boundary, which means I, if you do what I told you not to, I'm going to tell you is to stop again, which is, that's not a boundary. <laughs> a boundary is not about what other people do. And boundary is about how you respond to your environment with integrity and honesty. And so there's a difference between if you give my kid another pile of crappy plastic i'm going to set it up and fire uh there's there's that sure but there's also this is what we've decided this is what's important to us you know the the simplicity and um sustainability and if you choose to give toys a, that are not in line with that family goal then we're not going to keep them. And then, the you know, obviously, uh, I, I can't tell the future, but like the mm-hmm. dollars to donuts, this woman is going to be freaking out. Like, how dare you? And mm-hmm. when when that happens, mm-hmm. that's that's when it gets tough. That's when we're on the cross and we got to just, yeah. just because somebody else is going crazy doesn't mean we have to go along for the ride. Right. Yeah. I think anonymous needs to play what if in the sense that 
uh, I think that she needs to, you know, we, we can assume a reaction from the grandmother. And I think that she needs to realize that quite possibly, maybe and quite li likely, there'll be a, a blow up, excuse me. So perhaps she might want to have some things in mind, some ways that she's going to deal with that before it happens. Some, you know, I, I wanted to say come back, but that's not really what I'm getting at. It, it, definitely prayer, definitely, like you said, the bookends. It, Are you talking it, about like getting clear, getting clarity about what her values are so she no, can respond I, from I'm, her values? Not... I'm talking about how she'll actually handle the conversation to with the grandmother saying, you know, we this goes against our our values as a family. And so we can't accept these gifts. And and if if you do, you know, like it was suggested, if you if you do give gifts like this, then we will donate them to charity or whatever the the, the options might be. But in her head, get herself ready for that unpleasant conversation. It in and I'm saying it has to be husband and wife, yes. But I think that the husband should be pre 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 be preparing himself. But she's the one who posed the question. Right. And so to prep yeah. herself for, oh, okay, we're going to get some turbulence likely. So how will I handle that? Yeah, I hear that. Um, there's also in, you know, the world of recovery, um, there's a, a lot of trauma survivors fall into something that's called hypervigilance, which is where we basically try to play chess with the universe, play, try to play chess with everybody in our lives. Like if they do mm -hmm. this move, then I'm going to do this move. If they do that move and I'm going to do this move. And I, wow, I had no idea that was like running my life for mm -hmm. my entire life up to maybe like three years ago um, mm -hmm. and how much mental energy it took. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of why I said like, get clear about what is important Yeah. so that however she responds, like maybe the guardian angels will work a miracle and she'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Let's, mm -hmm. Let's make it all better like that. Like you did, Marge, you know, you, you pivoted to not yeah. get your grandkids noisy because you're a loving grandmother and you <laughs> want to value that relationship. Because yeah. um, really what it comes down to is no matter what happens, will God be with me? Mm -hmm. Can I trust God to get me through no matter what this cross turns out to be? No matter what I say, no matter what she says, no matter what my husband says yeah that in the end like we like getting clear about what we want to say and what's important to us and how we want to ideas of how we want to respond is is good because that can like build up our confidence but there's also that element of we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. and so as long as we are clear with our connection to god's provision and how we want to live out that trust she can, you know, the mother-in-law can go do, you know, 360s in the donuts in their front yard because she's so mad that, you know, God will still get them, okay, get them through and they'll be okay. Yeah. If, if you do, if you spend too much time thinking what the mother-in-law might say, you could make yourself just, you're going to go round and round in circles. Yeah. And I think there's that sense of, you calmly state, these are our values. This is our decision. Yeah. And, you know, like in my mind, if someone then gets attack, starts attacking, mm -hmm. you just repeat the same thing. Mm -hmm. you, you just, you know, you don't like, don't engage with the, the anger, with the nastiness, if it gets nasty, whatever it is. The, the other thing is, Erin, you want to go ahead? What? I'm just laughing because all I can think of is, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. you my <laughs> father. Prepare to die. Just say it over and over again. We are going to live simply. We will give your presence away. <laughs> Sorry. Back on track. <laughs> it's okay. The other thing I think, and this is just sort of like a general 
rule that we had back in the day. We don't have it anymore because it's not necessary, but we had it. If there was a problem with my family, I took the lead. And if it was a problem with his family, he took the lead um, just because. And it didn't always work out that way because sometimes there was something that happened right then and there in front of you and you know the other person wasn't there so yeah. the the parent who was there had to do something or say something and mm-hmm. i had that happen more than once and and i did it mm-hmm. but i'm also i don't know if you've noticed i'm a little outspoken and i'm strong minded no uh, yeah, <laughs> i know crazy <laughs> so i don't have a problem with speaking up but some people it's hard And if it is hard for you, then bookending and also practicing. And if you can't practice with your spouse, practice with someone. Because you, this is your family. This is, this is a gift that God has given you. And your your mother-in-law had the gift. And yes, you want your mother-in-law to be part of your family with this child, with this grandchild. But just. I'm sorry. I, I really, when, whenever we, I read these grandparent questions and not only in regard to this, this podcast, but sometimes on, on Facebook pages and so forth, I just want to shake the grandparents. And, and then I remind myself that there are actually three sides to every story. There's, you know, the daughter-in-law side, the mother-in-law side, and then there's the truth, which is probably somewhere a combination of the two things. But over and over, I do have this sense that these these young moms are trying to do something different. And because most of these, these women, these moms are my daughter's age. So the grandmothers presumably are around my age. And I'm thinking, well, I can be open-minded and flexible. I can learn new things. Why can't these guys, these ladies, like, like I learned about how to put the onesies on which I never knew. Like I'd been a mom a long time. I've changed a lot of diapers, a lot of babies. You just, you know, those little weird things on the shoulders, how they kind of open up. It's so that you can just pull them down and up. And when my daughter told me that I was like, no, (laughs) no, like, like, like what? (laughs) Did you know that Marge? No, I I didn't know it (laughs) until like three years ago. Are you (laughs) kidding me? Right. So, I mean, all, I had all, I had my children, I had my friends, kids, all of us, all of us, college educated, intelligent people <laughs> putting on clothes the wrong way, like the I hard way. It was like, cause like babies have, especially my babies, they all had giant heads. So <laughs> it over the giant head. I didn't realize it pull over the little shoulders. <laughs> like, okay. All right. So we're a little bit off topic. The point being your, your daughters and your daughters-in-law for the grandma, the grandmothers out there, they can teach us things. Yeah. And if it seems excessive, you were probably excessive when you were a new mom too. Love them, respect them. I'm sure that your mom said things to you. I mean, I, gosh, I can't even tell you. I cannot even speak some of the things my mother said to me when I gave birth to my son. I cannot even speak them. But I will tell you that my grandmother just yelled at her about what she was saying to me. So, but you can change, you can learn, you can grow. Yeah. That's what we're called to do, right? Yeah. yeah. That's just, my plea want, to grandmothers everywhere. <laughs> I just want to go back and, and clarify uh, because I realized once the two of you had started talk, start talking, I gave the wrong impression in terms of preparing for a conversation with the grandmother but on the part of the mother, not, not if she says this, I'll say that, but, but, but to prepare and, and look at herself inside of herself and prepare to handle the emotions or, you know, I've got, I've got that, I've got an Irish temper and, and I'm German enough to keep it there. So, you know, for my first reaction is pow, I just, you know, knock them over and I'm done. But, but that would be the kind of thing. How do I, excuse me, for for the mom to look at herself and how do I usually react in situations that are very stressful or or difficult or, you know, how will I handle my emotions if this gets nasty? That, that's really the prep that I, that I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hear that. Like definitely prepare 
your self with God's love and God's yeah. mercy and yeah. it, you know, the, the gift that God gift that God has given you because yeah, like what I'm hearing and what you're saying, Marge is like enrich, we can enrich our minds before we go into battle for lack of a better term, we can mm -hmm. enrich our minds with, you know, we are the children of mm -hmm. the God who has everything. Like, we don't have to fight like we have nothing to lose. We get to fight like we have nothing to gain. We already have everything. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's nothing that this woman can do or say that's mm -hmm. going to shake uh, us out of our value. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the preparing ourselves in that and, you know, connecting our own emotions to God's goodness before we have any kind of conflict with anybody is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing that up. That's good stuff. Well, you're welcome. You know, if we carry on that, that battle analogy, you know, take, take a shield with you, take a shield. And, the, and that shield is, is, you know, could be, could be the, the shield of St. Michael. It could be the shield of Christ. I, you know, when I ever, whenever I have, I know that there's a difficult situation I'm going to have to address or be part of, even even when I when I do speaking, uh, public speaking, because I'm really I'm I'm by nature I'm fairly introverted, so it's it's it takes me a bit to work myself up to be able to you know come off and being high energy. I take the Blessed Mother in with me. If there's a tough conversation, I will. See, I, visualization, and I know it doesn't work for everybody, but for me, it's very effective. I picture her coming into the room or whatever it is, and, and I actually imagine her sitting on that chair or standing beside me or so that I feel that, and she'll do it. I mean, she, she'll, because she loves you so much and she'll be there. She wants what's best in, in the terms of this mom, she wants what's best for you and your husband yeah. and, and your son and, and even the grandmother. So she is, uh, she's got a vested interest in this conversation, which hopefully is not a confrontation, but invite her in and bring that, that shield of made up of graces and prayers and protection of fill in the blank of your favorite saint name, whoever you feel is, is most effective for you. You, the what I do something I remember you telling me that years ago, Marge, years ago <laughs> about the, that technique, and you know I've used that mind the one the saint that I love picturing going into like a battle, mm -hmm. Saint Joseph, because just oh. even recently, I mean I did this uh, consecration to Saint Joseph the year of Saint Joseph. I can't even remember what year that was, and um, just like very very recently. Somebody pointed out, like, all of our statues of St. Joseph, even the young ones, he's this skinny guy. <laughs> if you think about it, he was hauling wood. He was swinging big hammers. A friend of mine said, St. Joseph was ripped. Like, he was this huge, muscly, strong, strong guy. So mm -hmm. I kind of, like, you know, picture this big, muscly, bearded dude walking into you know, ahead of me, like carrying a hammer going like this. <laughs> like, I don't have anything to fear. <laughs> I love it. So, <laughs> so there's this amazing image of St. Joseph with the child Jesus at Our Lady Queen of the Universe uh, Shrine Basilica, actually in Orlando. And he's at his workbench and Joseph has abs and he's got guns and, and mm -hmm. he is buff yes um, and it is the best it's such a beautiful beautiful image it's a sculpture it's not a painting it's a sculpture and jesus is sitting there with him you know at the workbench working so forth so on and it's true i think when we look at the saints obviously they're frozen in a statue a, a painting an image and so and they look very very perfect they all look so so perfect but they were people and they did real life things like hauling wood and mm -hmm. cutting up wood and carving. And, you know, Mary did laundry and cooked dinner and they are not just, I have a, a woman, a friend of mine, she 
she was she's a convert from from being Protestant. She became Catholic. She says, you know, like it was like that little plastic Mary statue, and I could never be that little plastic Mary statue, right? <laughs> like that perfect thing. <laughs> and she says, but then I realized I learned who Mary really is and who Saint Joseph really is. Like all of this, we need the saints to get us through life and and parenthood because parenthood that is some tough work we do it's lovely yeah it can be wonderful i love my children would not trade them for the world i can say that now there were times though (laughs) that maybe i would have traded them a little bit but but we we were a family right and we stood our values were important what did we want to pass on to our children you know, so if it is simple and sustainable toys and and goods in your home, then pass that on to your children. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and bring in those saints, yeah, to help Amen. you. Amen. Yeah. Any final thoughts for our anonymous uh, mom? I I have one one last thing, and it it follows from what. Deanna was saying, and and that is, it struck me that perhaps uh, Anonymous could start praying to the patron saint of her mother-in-law mm-hmm. for help with this. And hopefully mm-hmm. she has a name that's easily recognizable as a, a as a patron saint. If she can't figure that out, um, perhaps, I mean, St. Anne is the patron saint of grandmothers. So... It, it, it was just a thought that mm. you know you, you're pulling in someone very directly linked then to this grandmother. So just a just a side thought from yeah. Deanna was saying that's a good idea too. And again, like I'm a big fan of getting the guardian angels to talk to each other, like the dads, the sons, the moms, the mother-in-law. Like ha- have a little have a little conference mm-hmm. and do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> An angel conference. A little angel <laughs> conference. Yes. Well, now seems like a really good time for us to pray for our anonymous mom and her family. So mm-hmm. let's, let's get that rolling in the name of the father and of the son and the Holy spirit. Amen. Oh God, you are so wonderful. And powerful wonderfully strong, glorious. We ask you to soften all of the hearts in this situation. And we know that soft hearts need strong boundaries so that they can stay soft rather than being scarred with the battle scars of sin. Please protect this little boy from the harms of any kind of conflict that could draw him away from you and to distort his image of what your love is like and what our blessed mother's love is like. Please strengthen this father so that he can become more like St. Joseph, ready to lay down his life for all that is true and beautiful and good. Please soften the heart of this mother-in-law. Teach her to be teachable. Teach her that There is power in humility that we are actually safer when we are softer and when we are more flexible and ready to learn from everyone, including those younger than us. And most of all, strengthen this mom, our anonymous mom, to be both strong and flexible, a real image of your blessed mother in this home, in this family, and in this world. And we ask all of these guardian angels to get together and join hands and bring this family closer to you and each other in a good and holy and warm way. And we ask this through the intercession of those guardian angels and the holy family St. Joseph, and our Blessed Mother. Amen. In the name Amen. of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hey, Marge, do you want to give us our uh, listeners a little teaser for our next episode? All right. The next episode. We're talking about not being able to have contact with your mom for an extended period of time. How do you handle that? And what are good reasons and not so good reasons for capping off con a contact with your mom? So join us then and find out. Thanks for listening to Mommy Issues, sponsored by WCAT Radio. New podcasts need reviews, so please consider leaving one for us. And if you were watching this on YouTube, please comment, like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Because the more of those things you do, the more YouTube shows Mommy Issues to others, which may be a service to them and their healing hearts. If you'd like to send us a question, get more information, or contact any one of us, you can email us at mommyissues at livenotlukewarm.com. That's mommyissues at livenotlukewarm.com. I'm going to pause here. Can you guys hear my dogs barking? No. Okay. I'm going to back that up. <laughs> One day I will tell you about my traumatic experience with a petting zoo and you'll understand all will be revealed. All Maybe we should understood. do that next episode.